Hey people, welcome to the Run Testers, and in this video we are asking if the Merrill Agility Peak 5 has what it takes to rival the Hoka Speedgoat 5. These are two remarkably similar shoes, both built for rolling happily from road to trail and tackling everything from short off-road excursions to longer ultra-endurance adventures on technical terrain. But does Merrill have a shoe to rival the goat? Well, watch on to find out in our head-to-head. -head. Some quick details then. Well, the Merrill Agility Peak 5 stack height is listed as 31 mils in the heel, 25 in the forefoot for a six mil drop. The Speedgoat 5 has a marginally higher stack, particularly up front under the toes, with 32 mils in the heel and 28 mils in the forefoot for a lower four mil drop. The Peak 5 tips the scales at 280 grams or 9.9 .9 ounces in my UK test size eight and a half. That's a chunk lighter than the Hoka Speedgoat 5 that comes in at 10.3 ounces or 291 grams. Price-wise, they both come in at £140 in the UK, but the Speedgoat 5 is $15 more expensive in the US at $155 to the Agility Peaks $140. Let's give you a quick shoe whip round of both of these. And will these two shoes follow much the same blueprint for a good daily trainer trail shoe? You've got a big stack of rocked midsole, flexible reinforced mesh uppers, good padded plushness in the heel collars and substantial five mil logs across both. And when it comes to the midsole, both shoes are well cushioned daily trainer style trail shoes that aim to balance cushion comfort with some speed and versatility. There's a huge similarity to the geometry of the midsole, the Agility Peak uses a new recipe medium density float pro foam that's softer and more energetic than the previous peak models. There's also a rocker to help smooth the ride and provide extra efficiency for those heel to toe transitions. Plus Merrill has included a rock plate here for extra protection from the gnarlier lumps underfoot. You don't get that in the Speedgoat 5. The Speedgoat 5 packs more midsole height overall with a chunk more in the forefoot. The GOAT uses a single density compression molded EVA that's lighter and more responsive than past Speed GOAT models. And it also has a late stage meta rocker to help with those transitions. Now up top, the Agility Peak 5 has engineered mesh uppers with generous pliable TPU overlays from toe to heel. That's good for durability. There's also a gusseted wraparound tongue that prevents lace pinch. The Speed GOAT 5 meanwhile has a double layer jacquard mesh and you've got this kind of neoprene style patch across the top of the toes that's there to give a bit more flex should you need it. The heel collars are a tiny bit narrower on the Speed Goat and less flexible. The padding drops more evenly down into the shoe as well, while the Agility Peak has this kind of more roll top design. The structure in the Speed Goat heels rises higher up the heel too, and you've got this kickback heel collar while the Agility is more traditional in terms of its heel collar. The Merrill has some extra clever details too that you don't get on the GOAT. There's a D-ring, a little loop at the bottom of the laces that gives you more lacing options, plus a Velcro gaiter attachment at the heel. You also, as I mentioned, get these wraparound overlays that boost the durability of the shoe. They are not present on the Speed GOAT. Flip them over and both shoes have a generous covering of multi-directional 5mm Vibram Mega Grip. Traction lugs, the Agility's mix of chevrons and X-shaped lugs are specifically designed to increase traction and shed debris with each step. And though the lug depth is listed as the same as the Speed Goat, I think they actually look notably more substantial. So I've brought you down to the quiet river in London where you could hear the sirens going off. But anyway, fit. First up the fit, ran true to size in both of these shoes in a UK eight and a half, which is my regular running shoe size. And I would recommend going true to size in both of these shoes. If anything, I would say the Hoka fit marginally more snug. There's not quite as much room across the top of the toes or just coming into the toe box at the back of the toes, the Agility Peak 5 offer a little bit more, but I've got good heel hold, good lockdown across the top of the midfoot in both of the shoes, and I would recommend going true to size in both, unless you really want a wider, longer fit in your trail shoes. I don't, I tend to run in my regular size, then you might want to go half a size up in both to give yourself a little bit more room, but I would recommend going true to size, that's how I would run in both. Now in my tests, I've run hundreds of miles in the Speedgoat 5, and it's been one of my favorite workhorse trail shoes for when plodding around the New Forest trails and onto coastal paths and things like that. I've clocked considerably less in the Agility Peak 5, around 30 miles, but I've covered very similar terrain in that time. For both shoes, that includes mainly hard packed, well-groomed park and river paths, forest trails, rather than anything particularly steep or technical with the odd bit of grass and heavy boggy mud thrown in for good measure. Now my longest run in the agility was 90 minutes on feet, whereas I've done six hours plus even longer in the Speed Goat 5. 
I also clocked plenty of miles on the road to reach those trails, so I've given both shoes the road to trail credentials of both shoes at least a thorough test as well. Now I also took these shoes to the Thames path for a side by side mile with one shoe on each foot to compare how they felt up against each other and this is what I found. So I've just come down to the river down here and I've just done my side by side mile. I've got the Speedgoat 5 on the left foot, I've got the Agility Peak on the right foot. As I said in the build up to this video from all the run testing that I've done, these are remarkably similar shoes and when you've got them on the foot that doesn't change. They ride in a very very similar way overall the fit is quite similar if anything i would say that there's a little bit more room in the back of the toes and into the toe box in the agility peak 5 now i've got them on side by side for comparison the speedgoat 5 just fit a little bit more snugly in that toe box over and across the top of the toes as well the agility peak rise a little bit higher off the toes so if black toenails is a problem for you or you're going to be looking at doing ultras then maybe you want to go for the slightly area slightly roomier agility peak five but it's a marginal difference here when it comes to the ride the major difference and this is a bizarre one because the speedgoat five has a higher listed stack than the agility peak five but it feels much higher the agility peak five when you're underfoot it feels like you've got more cushioning underneath it's probably slightly softer. It's definitely a little bit more springy, a bit more bouncy, but again, not a huge amount, just a shade. And then I think you're probably noticing that bigger drop that's on the Agility Peak 5 that just tips you forward a little bit more, just gives you a little bit more forward momentum. I think it kind of gets you into that rocker a bit quicker than you might get from the flatter Formula Drop Speed Goat 5 which does just run a little bit more flatter. There's a bit more ground contact as a result. So on technical trails, maybe that will come into its own, but on this kind of flat, you know, muddy, but wet, but sort of easy to run off-road stuff, I think the Agility Peak 5 probably have performed ever so slightly better. These are both great shoes for these conditions though. Now, as well as doing the trail bit here by the river, I've also done a road section on the way back. And when you hit the road, that extra feeling of slight sort of softness that you get from the Agility Peak 5 probably makes them marginally better. But again, these are both good shoes at doing road sections. And particularly if you're doing ultras that take you back into towns, villages, and that kind of thing, where you've got sections of road, where you're gonna be on really hard, compacted ground. These are both shoes that will cope with that, I think, really well. I sort of said it again in the build-up to this, or I said it actually in the Agility Peak 5 review, that races what like the MDS or desert races, where you know you're gonna be hitting some really hard ground, as well as softer bits and technical trails, then I think these shoes will do you a really good service. Yeah, very little to choose between them overall, now that I've done that mile run, but we'll wrap that back up in the office. So these are both good workhorses that will handle a range of terrain and a wide variety of paces. And I can happily wear either for just clipping along the trails happily. Both shoes offer good reliable grip. I didn't get to test them on crazy steep or rocky terrain, but they held firm in all the test conditions I threw at them. And I'd say the Merrill just about edged it on grip though overall. Verdict then, and I'm quite surprised to be saying this, but I think the Merrill Agility Peak 5 has all the necessary tools to rival the Hoka Speedgoat 5, particularly on rolling road to trail terrain. Now the Agility Peak 5 has a lot going for it. It's really nicely balanced, cushioned protective trail shoe, and it's a match for the Speedgoat's easy rolling ride that makes it a great shoe for longer ultra efforts where you need a bit of extra foot protection. But that's also very true of the Speedgoat 5. And for me, I think the decision here between these two shoes may well come down to the price. In the UK, the Speedgoat 5 and the Angility Peak are both listed at the same price. Though if you're in the US, you'll be able to pick up the Merrill cheaper, and that makes it even more appealing in my book. Now, if you're considering a Speedgoat style trail shoe overall, I'd definitely say the Agility Peak is worth your careful attention. You can find good deals on both these shoes as well. Whichever one you can find cheapest, I'd recommend going for that one. Now, for me personally, if I have to get off the fence here and choose one shoe that I would like to run in for the rest of my life if I only had one option, I think on balance it would probably still be the Speedgoat 5, but that might just be down to how familiar I am with what's become such a reliable trail buddy for me. But I have this feeling that if we were to check back in about eight months' time, the Merrill may well have joined it firmly on my list of trusted trail favorites. It's a really good shoe and I don't think you're gonna really find too much discrepancy between these two shoes. So yeah, if you have a preference for one of these brands, go for that. So there you have it. That's our review of the Merrill Agility Peak 5. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments below. If you've had a chance to run in either of these shoes or both of these shoes, let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell for more great run testers videos when they land. Otherwise, thanks as ever for watching. We really appreciate you taking the time to join us on the channel and we hope to see you again soon. 
In the meantime, happy running, everyone.